Hi, I'm here with my two friends from Sandra Countertops, Robert and Seth. Uh, today we're going to address the big hot topic question in the granite and quartz industries, which is better, granite versus quartz. It's a, a hot topic issue, there's a lot of misinformation, especially on the internet, but uh, hopefully since Sarto sells both granite and quartz, they'll be able to give a, an unbiased opinion on the strengths and weaknesses of both granites and quartz. So I have a list of questions here, they're the most common questions that come up in this this area. So the first question is, what is the real difference between granite and quartz? And I'm talking as in like material, right? In the material of the tool. Right. The, the main difference is primarily that one's a natural stone and one's manufactured. And what that you know equates to as far as the visible eye for a customer really is going to be that uniqueness and intricacies that take place in a granite stone uh, versus the the quartz. In the granite, uh, because it happens naturally, that can't be mimicked. I mean, that is uh, you know so random and is so unique in and of itself that that can never be you know matched in a, a quartz top. Now, it's something they try to do because one of the or the biggest part of the quartz manufacturing is to try to mimic the granite. So they definitely try to do it, but it's just something that can't be achieved completely. I mean, the other side of it, on the on the reverse side of that, is that um, granite can have a hard time trying to get a solid surface color, like a complete white with nothing or a complete black. Now, there are certain colors where you can get a very, you, such a uniform pattern that you in granite that you'd almost think that it was manufactured. But for the most part, there are those colors, but for the most part, it is very difficult to get a solid surface color like you can with quartz or such a uniform pattern that you, would make you think that it was manufactured. That's something really that it happens more so in quartz. So, so if someone, someone wanted a solid white, they would, they would most, probably yeah, go quartz. Almost definitely you're going to want to go with quartz or a solid brown or tan. You're going to want to end up in quartz. And you do have that a lot. Usually it's more in commercial applications or more so in someone who wants an extremely modern look. If they want that extremely modern look, they're going to want like that solid surface. And so I would say that's the main thing. Now there's other, there's other properties um, that make up these differences and we're going to go over those a little oh, bit yeah, more okay, in yeah. the questions. We'll hold there because yeah. Yeah, we, we go into the, the finer details. All right. So Seth, heat. A lot of people want to know when they put their, their pots and pans on the countertop. Ah, uh, yeah. Which one holds up better, granite or quartz? So the, when when quartz first became it came onto the market, um, and you know it was kind of experimental at first, and then it became a popular countertop product. It was pretty sensitive to heat. It gets better every year. Um, quartz. It, it used to be if you put if you accidentally put a hot pan on quartz for a second or two, you would actually uh, you'd actually burn a ring into it. Um, and now it's a lot better. Uh, quartz can withstand, you know, 120, 130 degrees. Um, some quartz up to 200 degrees. So anything below boiling, to, which is uh, 220. Um, uh, quartz, is, so quartz is much better. Granite, on the other hand, uh, is good to 1200 degrees. I mean, it, it's, yeah, you, you can you really, if, if you're cooking with something that's 1200 degrees. Yeah, you gotta really, <laughs> you gotta, you gotta really try hard to mess that one up. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're not gonna burn granite. So quartz is, is, I would say yes, it is sensitive to heat. You don't wanna put your hot pants on it, but it's not, I mean, it's not really, if you, if, especially on dark quartz, if you put a pan for a couple seconds, you'd probably be okay. Definitely would be very careful with a lighter quartz. Uh, the white ones are, are just going to be more susceptible. But yeah, so as far as heat goes, you're pretty much safe. They're both really good products, but the granite is pretty much impervious. Okay, so we could say granite shaves that, that round. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so do you seal granite in quartz? So granite, you do have to seal pretty much across the board. Even if it's the densest stone out there, you want to put a sealer on it. Uh, is the sealing process hard? No. And any more with sealers they have, you you can if if you go through the proper fabricator, they will seal it and they'll put either a lifetime sealer or a very long, you know a sealer that's got a lot of longevity, 15, 25 year seal or something like that. Quartz, you technically don't have to seal. Now there is um, a misnomer out there that say quartz is non-porous. That's it's it's 
almost non-porous. Um, it is light quartz in particular. Uh, you do want to keep uh, really stainable stuff off. We had one scenario at our shop where a piece of light quartz was stained by a piece of wet metal sitting on it overnight and um, it left a rust spot. It's probably not going to happen in most people's house. Uh, um, but to say it's completely non-porous, it's not completely true. However, it's almost non-porous. So it eliminates the need to seal it. So even with granite that's sealed or quartz that you say is not sealed, but it's supposed to be impervious to stains, you still want to be careful with that at least. Yeah. You, know, you want to, it doesn't mean that you, you know, have to freak out if something spilled there. But it definitely means that you don't want, again, like in the case of where Especially we have a time. piece of metal yeah. on a wet surface. You don't want to leave it, it a long time. Leave it over there overnight. Right. So even on both these cases, uh, they, you know, you have to treat them accordingly and make sure that you're responsible enough to clean up and not uh, use harsh chemicals and, and different things like that. Just general care. Yeah. Um, so the next question, um, are there significant downsides or upsides to either one you know really is it significant now it, it really depends on, on the application um, the biggest differences that we've been running into in, in our industry with our shop in particular um, I would say the downside to granite is that you have to seal it um, is that a big downside not really uh, the sealing is is is, um, is done quite well anymore and it lasts a long time uh, you don't have to seal quartz. It's an upside to quartz. It is. Um, the downside, one of the downsides to quartz being man-made, it's, it's 94% roughly real stone. The other 6% is the resin. It's, uh, uh, it's bonded together with that resin. The resin is not inert as we say granite is, uh, granite is inert. The resin actually expands and contracts with uh, temperature change. So what we've been seeing, and it's more so on specific brands of quartz, it's actually the softer ones are a little more durable in this sense. Uh, with that expansion and contraction, especially around something that creates a lot of heat like a cooktop, you can get a quartz top that three, four, five years down the road it'll crack. Um, so that is actually a downside to quartz is it expands and contracts. It's not inert, it's not, it's not, um, it, it actually almost has a life to it that reacts with, with temperature change as opposed to granite, which you know, is, is completely inert. It doesn't react. That's pretty significant. Yeah, it is It is significant, especially, and I would definitely, if, if you're going to buy quartz, ask about the specific brand that you're buying because some brands are, are worse than others. I won't say the brands here on, on this, uh, in this conversation, but uh, yeah, some, some brands are, are worse and some brands are, are, have a really, really great warranty. I mean, no matter what happens, they're going to replace it. Um, as far as other differences, uh, the, oh, one thing I would like to, uh, and maybe it's in your list of questions, uh, uh, but the fading, um, we could talk, you know, uh, oh, that's the next one. Uh, <laughs> the, next, the next question. So those quartz are kind of fade over time. You're, you might as well run with it. Soon as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, granite definitely does not fade. Uh, it's a stone. It's probably been there for a thousand, two thousand years. It's, it's not going anywhere anytime soon. Uh, quartz, that resin, again the resin, um, it, in direct sunlight it can fade. Now to reassure everyone uh, who's about to panic because they have quartz uh, in their kitchen, most windows, if you have a house that's 20 years old, it's got a UV guard on the window. So even though you get sunlight through the windows, you don't actually have ultraviolet rays which is what will fade quartz. You leave quartz outside or do it on an outdoor kitchen, it's going to be a completely different color. In, in a year or two. Uh, but again, to reassure everyone, inside it probably will be okay because pretty much all your UV rays are blocked by whatever coating you have on the window. So as long as you're, so if you're basically if you're going for an outdoors. Uh, you stick, with stick with granite. Yeah, if you're doing an outdoor kitchen, yeah, stick with granite. Uh, unless you like the idea of your quartz changing color over time. Okay. Okay, so the next question is, how does a seam look on uh, granite versus quartz countertop? Yeah, th th this is a really great question. Um, and, and there's no real set answer for it because it varies per company. Um, it depends on how much time you take with each seam. Typically, quartz, because it's bonded together with that resin, 
Um, it's not quite as chippy as granite, so when you cut it with the, the industrial tooling that it takes to cut these products, it leaves a crisper, finer edge, typically. So when you go to fit the seam together, it's, it fits a little bit tighter. The downside of quartz is it's typically a little more of a solid color. It's not all broken up in color like granite is. So when you have this solid color or, or solid-ish color, and then all of a sudden there's kind of a little bit of a line going through where that seam is, it is more noticeable. You won't feel it as much, uh, but it's a little more noticeable. With granite, the color's typically broken up so much that when you put it together with a good epoxy and, and a skilled professional does it, it, it is more invisible. And we and I can say that oh, from experience. You're saying granite is more invisible. Yeah. So yeah. Like, everywhere I've heard it's all about sports. Sports is, is better for the seams. Right, right. If, yeah, if you go online and, 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 and I actually want to say something about at the end about what you read on online when it comes to granite and quartz. But again, it does vary per company. But yeah, you when you try to match the color of a quartz product. I mean, the only way you could actually match that color is if you remade the quartz inside that seam. You're gonna put it together with an epoxy that's not gonna be the exact same color. And it is a little more, it is a little more visible in granite where the color is so varied, even if you don't match it perfectly, it's broken up. And, and again, it depends on the industry. Some people don't care enough about their seams and the granite seam is so chippy, you end up with kind of a, a wider seam, more fill, more epoxy really shows up that's actually where that where the thinking comes from that on a court seam it goes way more it disappears more it's because traditionally especially if you had a fabricator that didn't care that much the core seam naturally fit tighter because it's easier to fabricate in a shop without all that chippiness so it, it does it makes a difference for, per the fabricator but if it's done right granite is almost always going to be a little more invisible um, oh and one other thing i would mention too on granite on the field, when you install, it, it, depending on the application, this isn't done all the time because it, it, it's, it's quite risky to do. If it doesn't come out really, really smooth or very close to smooth, you can actually top polish that seam with the right tools and the right amount of skill. You can't do that on quartz. You'll actually burn it uh, uh, because it, everything on quartz has to be done in the shop where there's a ton of water on it. Uh, um, so that's, that's one disadvantage actually the quartz has on that seam is you do have that backup plan of, of you can top polish that, that seam out if you have to on granite but you can't do it on quartz. So the next question is with what is more durable? On the, the, they're both again they're really durable products. Uh, the one thing with granite is it's harder. It is harder. Uh, and, and actually again you read online that quartz is harder. I, I challenge anyone who on their blog or whatever says quartz is harder to come to a shop that actually does it and try to drill a hole through quartz and then try to drill a hole through granite. A granite hole, when you're drilling a hole, and I don't care how soft it is, because there is it, do, it does change. Some granites are really hard, some are softer. Um, it's going to take you, you know, 20, 30, 40 seconds to drill a hole through a granite countertop. On a quartz countertop, when you go to drill that hole for the faucet or whatever, you're going to pop through that thing in three or four seconds. And if that doesn't tell you which one is harder, I mean, there, there's a huge difference. Now, does that translate actually to your usage, uh, the usage of your countertops? Not really. I mean, it, you can actually, on the quartz, there is, especially again, the lighter ones, you, you could potentially actually scratch a quartz countertop with a knife. You'd have to really be going at it, and, and it's fairly hard to do, but we do, we see when we go back in these, you know, a house where a light quartz has been installed for five, six years, we find scratches in it. You don't find that with granite. Granite's too hard. Um, so there is there is a difference in durability there. It's not significant though. Going back to the original we were talking about with expansion and contraction on the quartz, that's the real difference in durability is granite is inert. It's never gonna change. Um, it is what it is. Well, uh, well, I think a lot of people want to know is can they cut, can use their knives on the granite? And the quartz can do. You can actually. You're you're probably not gonna. You're definitely not gonna damage the granite. You're probably not gonna damage the quartz. You will damage the knives though. So so it's it's better to use a cutting board because your knife is gonna work great the first couple times and then it's gonna be dull. That's the best reason to do it. Yeah. Okay, we're down to the second last question. It is. Oh wait, that was last second last one. Which is easier to scratch? So we, we've settled that one. So the last one is. 
Uh, so after all this, why would a person choose one or the other? Color. I mean, I got in your experience in sales, Robert. I mean, when you say, I mean, if if you were purely going off of durability or or um, advantages, you, you probably the, the the again, regardless of what you read on the internet, which is written by a bunch of quartz manufacturers, um, you're probably going to go with granite. Uh, but really, what it comes down to is color. Is what's going to look best in your home. If you're looking for a marble look, which is the white, almost the solid white with a little bit of gray in the background, but you don't want to use marble because it is not durable at all, you're probably going to, you, you need to go with quartz. I mean, that quartz is a product for you in that because there's no granite out there that looks like marble that has a marble look. Um, that'd be a time for you to get quartz. Uh, uh, so, so there, there's kind of the difference. If, if you're really set on a specific color and you can't find it in granite, then quartz is for you. If you like the color of granite, which most people do, and there's almost endless options, or you're going for that longevity, that durability, and that peace of mind, knowing that you're not going to wake up one day and have a crack from the corner of your cooktop out to the edge of your countertop, um, then granite's the one for you. But it really, it, it's up to your individual taste. And what I would say, kind of to close it out, <clears throat> may mention also price. I, oh, that's a really good point. And the fact that you can get into some marble looking granite, but the price that you're gonna to have to get into to get something similar to that um, tends to be pretty exotic materials. Yeah. And yep. It tends to be a little bit cost prohibitive when you compare it to a marble looking quartz. And then vice versa. If you're looking at entry level countertop, granite's gonna be the cheapest by far. I mean, we got granite countertops starting at, you know, 35, 39, 42, 43 bucks, depending on the region you're in. And most quartz is going to start in the $60 range. So, it, yeah, it goes both ways. Quartz kind of caps out. You don't really get much more expensive than $120, $125 square foot for quartz. Whereas granite starts lower, but it's, it's endless. I mean, you can get granite in the two to $300 range of square foot. Um, Easily, if not more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's some really exotic stuff out there. Uh, but one that I like to tell a little story, uh, uh, and, it, and, and it's because when you go on the internet, you're going to read probably a lot of things the opposite of what we just talked about here. And it's because this is such a hot topic, a lot of bloggers will just, they'll write on this topic without having, knowing anything, maybe doing five minutes of research because they want hits. And, it, and, and it's, it's, a, it's a very much asked question, what's the difference between granite and quartz? And, and just, again, a funny story. Um, Regarding uh, kind of touching on what what people read on the internet. I had a lady uh, Call me one day and she wanted some granite countertops and she specified she said I want granite that uh, Doesn't have any weird occlusions in it And and I thought oh, oh, oh Okay, I don't really know what that means and maybe she mixed up a different word I'm like fine and and she, so I met with her and we were looking at some granite and she reiterated again I really don't want any granite with with occlusions or really weird occlusions. And I was like, wow, I've never heard that word before, especially in the countertop industry. And she, I actually got a text from her later too, like really saying how she didn't want granite with occlusions in it. And uh, uh, so I looked up the definition of occlusion and it has something to do with blood clots. Uh, uh, <laughs> didn't you find one, the one listing that was had that was a blog? Well, so I, I looked, I went on Google and I put, Weird occlusions granite. And it, a blogger came up and said, watch out for weird occlusions and granite. Now here's an example of a lady who did a little research on countertops and took information away from a blog. I mean, this guy literally had no clue what he was talking about. And he threw a word out there to make it sound good, the word occlusion. And, uh, uh, and, and, and she fell for it, you know, bless her heart. We did her kitchen and, and, and everything was fine. There was no weird occlusions in her granite. <laughs> but, but the reason I tell that story is, you know, what you'll read on the internet and what's actually true can be completely different things. Find a reputable countertop company and ask them questions. Ask them to show you the difference. Um, uh, you can, you can find out, don't, Go off of what Some you read. Some of the trade on. organizations. Yeah, you can. Yeah, you Marvel can. Institute, Marvel Florida Institute of America. America. Yeah, look it up. See what they have to say. Yeah, that's a really good point. Um, yeah, there, there's a lot of information out there. 
Um, talk to somebody who actually is in the industry and, and knows what they're talking about. Okay, we covered a lot there. I'm glad we covered price because that really should have been on the list. What's the difference in price? Yeah. But yeah, we've covered a lot. I hope the viewers at home um, have learned something from this discussion. Uh, hopefully it's shed some light on the quartz versus granite debate. If you want any more information, uh, feel free to contact us at SARTO uh, via our website or our telephone number.